Well, let's get started. So today we will continue with uh, our topic, customer relationship management. Last time we, talk, we started talking about uh, traffic building techniques and we spoke about search engine optimization. Today we will discuss uh, a second approach to traffic building and that is online PR, that is online public relations. Now I'll take you back to our first lecture when we, among other things, we discussed about business stakeholders, that is individuals or organizations that are either affected or affect uh, our, our business. So you have suppliers, government agencies, investors, political groups, customers, communities around your business, employees, trade associations. So all these are regarded as business uh, stakeholders in the sense that our activities either affect them or we are, affect, we are being affected by their opinions, their activities, their decisions, and so on. And as I've said, all these stakeholders have a significant impact on the performance of your, uh, of your business and how they perceive you determines how they will cooperate with you, how they will behave, how, how they will act uh, towards your business. And as such, it's very important for you as a business manager or a business owner to maintain the reputation of your organization because the kind of image these stakeholders have about your uh, business will affect the way they act uh, towards you. So we want to build a, a business where we manage our uh, image before our stakeholders. It has been said, a satisfied customer, a customer will tell three friends, but an angry customer will tell 3,000 people. Of course, the number could be exaggerated, but the point is uh, usually when we are dissatisfied, we tend to tell uh, more people than when we are satisfied. And of course, customers are just one example from, uh, of the stakeholders or of the people that can affect our business. Sometimes the media could affect your business. Here you have examples of uh, some stories in, in the uh, newspapers, and this is a leading uh, media organ, BBC. Uh, they wrote a story uh, last year about terrible working conditions for uh, employees who are working uh, in a factory that produces, or that produced uh, iPhone 6. So it was a, a trendy story uh, on, in, in the internet. Of course, these stories have been there even before last year, but this was a, a kind of a hit in the, in the media. So Apple had to address this. Uh, in terms of uh, protecting their image because uh, despite the great products they are producing, still they need to create a positive image in the society. If their activities are perceived to have negative uh, impact in the society, that's not very good. It can have some implications on, in the business. So you, you also have uh, Coca-Cola, which are from time to time has been uh, blamed or has been linked with uh, unhealthy uh, conditions such as uh, obesity. Facebook also has been, uh, I at some point, has been condemned for uh, affecting uh, social lives uh, uh, in, in the societies. So such stories can happen not just to large companies, but even to small companies. This is a uh, Football Frue is, uh, is one of the leading bloggers in, in, in Norway. And in the period leading to the end of uh, last year, she has encountered a number of uh, criticisms. Uh, and one of them is that she was alleged to fabricate comments on our blog. Our blog is one of the uh, top blogs in Norway. In fact, I checked even today. It's, uh, now it's getting back to the top. but due to these uh, allegations and criticisms, uh, the performance had declined for some time. But eventually, a story came out that 
she is writing the comments herself. And later on, her husband also uh, admitted that he was also part of that, like creating fake uh, comments. And also, she was again uh, uh, criticized for manipulating the pictures, uh, creating sort of false impression of uh, how she looks. And this huge to to great extent to ruining the reputation of our blog. As I said, the performance of the blog uh, declined for some time, but now it's uh, getting back uh, again on track. But these are just examples of how such uh, negative stories uh, in the media, in the public, can affect your business. And it's not just uh, media uh, businesses, but also any business could be affected by such negative uh, comments. And that's why we are concerned about PR, that is public uh, relations. And by definition, uh, uh, Chartered Institute of Public Relations uh, define it as planned and sustained effort to establish and maintain goodwill and mutual understanding between an organization and its uh, publics. In, in the end, the goal of public uh, relations is to protect uh, the reputation of your organization. Or put it in other words, Public, the core of public relations is to manage the reputation of your uh, organization. And by organization, it could be a government agency, uh, a business, a profession, a public service, a small business or a larger business. And publics are the stakeholders, the, the individuals or organizations that are affected or affect your organization, uh, people that matter to you. So. You want to create uh, uh, a situation where you are, the image of your business is protected all the time. And this is possible by understanding your, your stakeholders and trying to influence their opinion. Because we know that this uh, opinion, especially negative opinion, can be very uh, infectious. It can spread very fast and eventually ruin the image of your organization. So from time to time, you want to make sure that you persuade these stakeholders in a way that the image of your organization remain intact all the, all the time. And that's what public relations uh, function is uh, co concerned about. So in the end, as I said, the aim is to manage the reputation of your uh, organization. And why are we concerned about uh, the, the reputation of an organization? It can be quickly summarized by a quote from Warren Buffett, the third richest uh, person on earth today, who said, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and only five minutes to, to ruin it. So it's very important that we protect the, the image or the, the reputation that uh, we create in your, uh, of our, about our organization, whether uh, we produce great products, we pr provide great service, we, we, we are conscious about the environment and so on. Whatever reputation that we have built, it's very important uh, to, to protect it because ve it's very easy for the reputation to be ruined. If in case of an incident or an event or rumors, be it true or false, could spread and ruin the image of your organization completely. So in the end, we want to protect the image of our uh, organization. Now, in the past, the spread of negative uh, information or negative stories about your organization was fast, but not as fast as it is today. With the invention of the internet and the web, the spread of negative stories or the spread of information generally is much faster than it used to be, which means a negative story uh, about your organization can reach millions of people just in a few seconds when pe as people share uh, such information either through uh, social media and other technologies, which means it's very important for us to be concerned about online PR. And this is the focus of this uh, uh, topic today. And because we are dealing with uh, digital uh, business, so one of the aspects that we want to uh, address is online public relations. Managing reputation of your uh, business 
in the internet space. And what this uh, does is to, to make sure that you are maximizing favorable mentions of your company or your brand on different sites that are uh, available uh, on the internet. So whether it's uh, so social media networks such as Facebook, Twitter, uh, blogs, or other websites. So you want to make sure that your brand is portrayed positively. The image of your brand remains intact, it remains positive all the time. And you do that by making sure that you are tracking. We, we will look at different ways uh, through which we, we can manage online uh, PR. And we are doing this because negative mentions about your brand can spread very fast online. And once they do that, they can affect perception of your customers and, of course, of other uh, stakeholders. And that has implication on the performance of your business. So as I said earlier, we want to create a positive image of, uh, of our business uh, before our stakeholders. And among other things, we are trying to mention how our business is portrayed online. How do people speak about our business online? So there are a number of activities that you, you, you can consider as uh, online PR, or a number of activities that you can uh, conduct as part of protecting the image uh, of your organization. The first one is communicating with the media. You have to create good relationship with different uh, media, in this case, uh, uh, journalists. And this could be uh, blogs, uh, could be established uh, media platforms, such as uh, leading uh, newspapers in, in the country, so on. But the aim is to make sure that uh, you use these platforms to communicate about your uh, your business in terms of uh, sharing information and or for instance something has happened as in case of uh, Apple when stories started spreading about the working conditions in, in their factories in China the CEO uh, Tim Quick, uh, Cook uh, came up quickly and issued a, uh, a statement about what was going on and they explained and if you are searching uh, in the internet today about uh, uh, Apple's uh, Chinese employees working conditions, you will get mixed uh, uh, stories. There are so many other stories that are defending uh, Apple. And that is possible by collaborating with uh, the media. So depending on the uh, size of your organization, of course, at least at some point you need to consider collaborating with the uh, media because these are the main channels through which information spread. And usually, People trust this uh, uh, information, whether it's a television channel, whether it's a leading newspaper. Whenever they publish uh, information, most people tend to believe it. So it's very important to collaborate with them and make sure that uh, you shape the kind of information that is shared through their platforms. And there are a couple of ways that you, uh, you, you can consider when it comes to uh, communicating with the media. And one of them, you could say, to, uh, a press release area on your website, and that is a section in your website where you attach all your press release, all your uh, communications to the public. And that makes it easy for journalists uh, to take that information and share it to the public. But also you can create email alerts about news that journalists and other third parties can sign up to. So you can create uh, email alerts, alerts in a way that if something happens, and you would like to communicate it to the media, the journalists can be alerted, can be notified quickly and receive an email with information concerning that uh, uh, incident or whatever that you would like to, to share. But another way is by submitting your news stories or release to online news feeds. And you could use uh, social media networks, uh, any other online platforms to present it as news feeds informing the public on what is going on about your, your brand. Another approach is link building, and that is trying to include good quality uh, hyperlinks to your site in, in the sense that uh, you are linking your website to other 
websites that are of high quality, or at least are perceived to be of high quality in the public. The saying goes, if you run around with losers, you will end up to be a loser. But if you run around with great people, you might end up to be a great person, right? Success follows success. So you try to find people that think like you, who are, you know, are the same standard. And then you link to them. And this is what we call a reciprocal uh, link approach, where you link other people, and other people will link you, right? Say, scratch your, my back, and I'll scratch yours. It, uh, just as when we follow people, uh, like, say, on Twitter, and they follow us back, and that's how it works. You do something for somebody, and they do the same to you. So try to find uh, great sites that you can link to, and they will link you back. And by being connected to great sites, you will improve the perception of, the, uh, of your audience about your, uh, your site. And that's one of the ways of attracting traffic to your, to, to your site. Another approach is using blogs, uh, podcasting, and um, rich site summary. And this is, these are uh, approaches of uh, sharing uh, information. You could, uh, besides your business, depending on what you are doing, but you could uh, create a, a blog where you use it as a platform for sharing information about your brand, also as a platform for interacting with the customers, where people can give you uh, feedback, you can update them on what, uh, what is going on, and the same way as podcast and a rich site summary. So it's just a, a way of uh, connecting to, to your audience and use it as a channel for sharing information about your, uh, your business. So depending on how you, you want to create the image of your, uh, of your business, you can use uh, the, your blog as a platform for building that image. In large companies, you could, there could be multiple blogs where employees are allowed to create uh, blogs and sharing information about various things that they are doing. But of course, in large, uh, such companies, when you allow your employees to create uh, blogs and portray your company, you need to control the content of what you are, they are posting because in the end, that will have implication or will have a, a, can affect uh, the, the image of your organization because those employees are linked to your uh, organization. Whatever they are saying uh, on the blogs can be regarded as an official statement of the uh, company. So it's very important that you can track what uh, individual employees are blogging about on behalf of the, of the company. But it's a very uh, useful way to connect to the uh, public. And another approach is managing how your brand is presented on third party uh, sites. And this is what I briefly uh, mentioned earlier. That is, you want to monitor how your brand or how your products, how your company is portrayed uh, on the internet. And luckily today we have tools that uh, uh, can help uh, do that, that can help you monitor how your business, how your brand, how your products are mentioned uh, on the internet. And examples of, of such tools are Google Alice, which is a free uh, of charge uh, tool, or Gigalet, which is a, a commercial uh, tool. Uh, there is a uh, limited uh, service that you can get for free, but if you want to get a more so sophisticated service, then you have to, to, to pay for it. But uh, Google Alice uh, is, uh, is uh, free of charge. So what happens with these tools is uh, you sign up uh, for these services and you present keywords that you, you would like to be tracked on the, uh, on the net. So when, if it, it could be the name of your products, the name of your brand, or specific phrases that you would like to be informed. Whenever they appear on the internet, this tool will send you an email that now this site has mentioned your, say, brand. And then you can go to that uh, site and read the content, what they talk about, whether it's something positive or uh, negative, and based on that, you can act. So, if it's some false stories uh, that people are trying to spread in the internet about you, you can easily get notified about that and address it accordingly. 
Another approach is creating uh, a buzz, and this is a, a form of online uh, viral marketing, where you're trying to uh, create a, a content and use a self-replicating uh, processes to spread uh, uh, the, the content. That the, the idea is you're creating something that uh, people can share willingly among themselves. So uh, it's a very powerful way of uh, getting your, your message across uh, the public, and it's very cost uh, efficient in the sense that you don't have to put effort to push that message across because people will sp spread it themselves. And this is one of the uh, examples, and there are so many examples uh, the, uh, of such uh, viral marketing ca campaigns. So this was uh, West Jet Christmas uh, Miracle. I think I mentioned this uh, uh, in the introduction of, of, of this course, where the video was very popular uh, 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 on YouTube. And it, in fact, what it, it did was to portray a sort of uh, public relation uh, 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 not public relation as such, but uh, uh, WestJet giving back to the to the society, and that created a very uh, positive image of WestJet. If you you go to the YouTube video and read the comments at, at the bottom below the video, you will see a lot of positive comments. There, there are a lot of people that are saying, "I've never used uh, I've never uh, used WestJet, but from this video, I feel like my in my next trip I should use." It. So. It's a way of creating positive image of your, uh, of your uh, brand. And these are some of the benefits of uh, using uh, su such approach. Uh, that is uh, creating a, a content that self-replicates in terms of uh, spread. It's very uh, cheap, as I said. You don't have to put any uh, effort to push the message. People will share it themselves reaches audience within a short period of time. So it, it spreads like virus. So people are sharing it among all, uh, one another and very soon to reach millions of people without a, any significant effort from your part. Rapid, it boosts adoption speed, exponential. So it, it's about uh, the replication e effect of uh, uh, viral messages. And of course, it's voluntary. People share it willingly. You, you are not forcing people to share your content. However, it's not very easy to create such uh, viral messages. There are some uh, factors that you need to consider. And the first one is provocation of emotion, that in order for people to share your, your content, the video or whatever content that you are sharing has to be engaging. And one of the easiest way is to play with people's emotions. Whether it could be something that is funny or it could be something that is very touching, but try to play with uh, emotions and people will share it. So if it's something interesting that is worth of sharing, someone will find it, uh, uh, they will find a reason to share it to their friends. They will want to, uh, their friends also to see it or to listen to it or to read it, whatever, it, depending on what content uh, you have. But the main important point is you have to provoke an emotion. You have to trigger an emotion. Someone has to feel it and find a reason or, uh, and see a reason to share it uh, further. Another approach that you can use uh, to get your message uh, spread is by rewarding that uh, attaching an incentive uh, to, to the, for those who will spread uh, the, the message. So one example is uh, Dropbox, where they encourage people to in invite their friends or relatives or whoever uh, to, to, to download the, the, the app. And once you do that, you are rewarded free space on your Dropbox. So in this way, it's very easy uh, for people to spread the word, to, to in, like attract uh, more traffic to, 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 your, to your business, because they get something in return for that. So this is one of the approach you can use uh, to, to get people spread the message or your, 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 your service. But of course, you have to consider the cost benefits uh, analysis. Yeah, so you cannot give too much service 
uh, for free in a way that you uh, th that busts your budget. So yeah, consider what is uh, practical in case of your your business. But the most important point is people like rewards, and if you reward people, they will work for you. And another factor that you need to consider is that you have to be transparent. So usually uh, when these uh, viral messages uh, spread, people know that partly they are for marketing purposes. So you cannot pretend that what you are uh, spreading it has nothing to do with your business. So it's not self-saving uh, at all. So be open about uh, your, your brand, that uh, you are standing behind uh, the, 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 the message. Of course, you don't have to say that I'm doing this for, for, for marketing, but at least don't hide yourself. So for instance, you cannot uh, pay someone or say a celebrity uh, present your product as if uh, in a way that they pretend they have nothing to do with you, but they, pretend they present your products as something of, uh, uh, say, cool, of high quality, but they are not doing it as marketing, or you are not open about your support to the uh, celebrity. That is not good, because customers do not like to be fooled, or any, all of us don't like to be fooled. So once we find out that a business is trying to play with our minds, the, the effect could be much stronger uh, th than uh, the, the, the impact of the, uh, of the stand itself. So it, it's very important that to be uh, transparent w whenever you are engaged in such uh, ac activities. So stand for and let people know that you are behind it. And of course, when you, you do that, it's also uh, advantages to your business because by le le letting yourself being seen, it helps to raise awareness about your business. Another approach that you can use is uh, to use uh, influential people in the internet to help get your message uh, across. So in the internet, there are people that have uh, many followers. They have uh, extensive networks. So th these could be bloggers, could be people with uh, popular accounts on YouTube, and so on. So try to look for such influential people and approach them for helping you to get your um, message across. So it could be in terms of uh, sponsorship uh, of their activities. It, it could be in terms of uh, advertising on their, uh, on their sites. Or in terms of partnership, that uh, reciprocal uh, uh, linking, that you are helping them in some way and they are helping you uh, the other way. But the point is try to get influential people in the internet to help you uh, spread message about your, your, your business. Another approach is uh, on online communities. And as I said, these are approaches to building uh, online PR. So we were just discussing on the use of viral marketing and different uh, issues around it. And now we are looking at online uh, communities. So as a way of uh, building PR, strong PR, you can create uh, an online uh, community that is own uh, a community where you use it as a platform for communicating with your, uh, with your audience. And likewise, you can use uh, social media networks uh, for, the same, for the same purpose. These have become very uh, popular today, and it, it's where you can find your customers. It's in the social media today that you can meet your uh, customers So uh, uh, as a way of building strong PR, use these platforms. But of course, since you are not the owner of the social uh, media uh, networks, it can, you can have uh, limited use of them in terms of the amount of data that you can extract from these uh, pl platforms, in terms of how you can engage your, your, your customers and prospects on these platforms. That's why you're also encouraged to have uh, uh, your own community where your customers can share experiences, where you can in interact wi with them, where you can get feedback, and where you can f provide a more specific uh, uh, service to your customers. And this is a, a, an example for a, a company that is using both uh, social media networks as well as its own community. That is 
uh, Dell. So Dell is, uh, is present on, in the social media uh, community where they use it for sharing relevant information, sharing content that is uh, relevant to their business and, uh, and as a way of uh, updating the society about what Dell is doing, what they are, the new products or events, whatever that they, they find relevant to share with their customers or their prospects. But they also want to deepen their relationship with their, with their customers. And that is, that's why they have uh, a community where they have, they, they have much more control in terms of the, the amount of data that they can uh, extract from this uh, platform in terms of how they can engage. So these are platforms and they are different. They both have different uh, effects. So you can consider having both uh, an online community for your business where you strengthen your, uh, your bond with your customers and as well as you, you consider to be present on social media networks where you can meet both your customers as well as prospects. Uh, there are a couple of uh, guidelines that you, you have to follow when it comes to the use of uh, social media because usually people tend to believe that the social media will work magic for you. So all that you, you would consider is which social media to be, uh, to be on and that's it. But in fact, there is an approach that you need to use because we have seen that not all businesses that are on, say, Facebook or on Twitter or any other uh, social media platform, not all of them receive the same amount of success. And that is for reason because social media will not work in the same way for every business. So here is a framework that can guide you on how you can go about your social media strategy. The first thing is you need to consider the people. That is uh, the audience that you are trying to uh, target. What kind of customers are you trying to uh, target and on which uh, social media platforms are you likely uh, to meet those customers? So it always has to start with the target audience, target uh, customers. And then you have to define the objectives. What are you exactly looking for in the social media uh, 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 networks? Why should your business be there? And which ob objectives are you planning to, uh, to, to attain? And how can you assess over time whether you have been successful or not? So you have to set objectives and on how are you planning to use the social uh, media platforms, how are you planning to engage your customers, and what are the potential benefits for doing so. And then it com comes down to how do you want to perform, and that is the strategy itself. So you have assessed your target customers, you have uh, set your objectives and decide which platform to be on, and then you have to decide a strategy, how are you going to engage them on that particular uh, platform. And then finally, the technology. So here you will consider the different uh, technological options that uh, you, you have with respect to, uh, to social media, how you can link the social media, say, to your uh, internal system. And if that is the case, which social media platform will be suitable for that? which uh, apps uh, probably d you need uh, for making your social media uh, project success and so on. So this is a sort of uh, guideline that you, you can follow to make sure that your social media uh, uh, strategies is, turns out to be success. So there are a couple of uh, success factors that uh, around a social media uh, strategy. That is the factors that can determine whether your, your social media strategy is successful or not, or your engagement of customers. And social media turns out to be a failure or a success. So the first uh, success factor is uh, understanding of your consumer's motivations for using social networks. So you need to understand why your customers use uh, social, uh, social media networks 
and that will help you to determine what kind of content that you should uh, use to engage your customers uh, with. So by understanding uh, their, their motives, it's easy for you to understand what kind of uh, content uh, you, you can use to engage these customers on that particular uh, platform. And then, of course, you have to express your, yourself as a brand. You have to present your brand. And in most cases, you, you are advised to use uh, the social media uh, networks as a platform for sharing that side of the brand that is not normally seen by, uh, by customers. So it's a way of pre presenting your image that customers usually uh, don't see. So you see uh, most uh, brands would use social media networks as a platform for sharing their uh, community development activities, uh, uh, their environmental initiatives, and so on. So use it to, to help your brand stand out, to present the other side of your, of your brand. Create and maintain good conversations. People like to be on social media uh, platforms for interactions. And you have to take initiatives to, to make sure that your, uh, your page or your, your site is active. And that is possible by initiating conversations uh, to get people started. And then empower uh, participants, and that is by uh, providing various tools that can help uh, participants uh, access your content, but also they can help them uh, share the content. Well, for instance, we, we discussed about uh, widgets when we talked about uh, uh, technology as a very powerful tool for helping uh, your audience share your co uh, content. And also, it's important to identify online brand advocates. So at any point as your brand develops, you will attract some fans, some people that will be willing to promote your, your brand. So you need to identify these uh, such individuals. And one of the ways you can identify them is by using the uh, online tracking tools I talked about, like Google Alice or uh, Giga Alice, where you find individuals that are talking positively about your, uh, your business. And it's advice that when you identify such people, you can approach them and even create relationship with them. So I I if it's, for example, it's a blog that talks about your products, then you can consider to have a relationship with that blog, or with that blog either to sponsor it or uh, display ads on, on that blog, and so on. So you bring them closer, because these are people that will help uh, to spread positive image about your, your, your business. And you have some uh, uh, rules or principles about how you can behave like a, a social networker. And that is uh, being creative in terms of the, the, the content. People like uh, original stuff. So if you are 